Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on updating our battle scene to have a very basic battle sequence, and so we worked on adding in logic to allow our monsters to attack each other and to take damage, and then eventually, once they take enough damage, they can become knocked out, and we would end our battle sequence. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There'll also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so now that we have the basic battle sequence logic in place for our game, we're going to look to implement a stamp machine for our battle scene. And so currently our battle logic is very simple where a player can attack, the monster can attack, and we just check to see if they get knocked out. But as we start to add more and more features to our game, it's going to get more complex. Uh, so we'll need logic for checking uh, when we want to switch to another monster uh, for a variety of different attacks and statuses such as like poison. Uh, there could be attacks that hit multiple times. Uh, we'll want to be able to check if we need can run away from the battle uh, using items and uh, much, much more. And so from here, our battle scene just get, get more and more complex, and we'll need a way to organize this data and easily test it uh, each piece in isolation. And one really good way to do this would be with a state machine, uh, because what we can do is with our state machine, we can define a state for each part of our battle sequence, and then that way we can keep all of our logic inside that state. And so if you're not familiar, a state machine at its core is simply a collection of states, um, some type of model uh, or interface that you define uh, that has a very defined system, how you can switch between each of your states. Uh, so as an example here, we have this very basic interface and typically your state uh, would have some type of hooks for allowing you to update your state and then and eventually you could transition to another state. Uh, in the example here, we would have an interstate and we would provide a character uh, to the interstate and then we would have one for handling input and that would allow us to transition to another state and then we would have an update one. It's a really good example for uh, characters in games is you might have one for idle, move, jump, and run. And uh, each of these states would have their own logic for maybe the animation that would play and the type of input we can accept. Uh, so example would be in your idle state, you would just have your sprite play your default idle animation. And then once you start handling input, you would transition to your move state and maybe your run state depending on uh, how that's set up. Uh, so in the example here, you'll see here when we're handling input in our run state, uh, we'll go ahead and handle that input. And then if nothing else is done, we would return back to our idle or our standing state. And so with your state machines, they can also be applied to real uh, world objects. And so some good examples are like coin operated turnstiles. They have a very limited number of states, traffic lights, a safe. Um, you have your appliances. And a really good example um, is this toaster one here. And so with your state machine, uh, in the example here, uh, we basically have five states. And we would start off in the initial state. And so this is when the toaster's not doing anything. And if we plugged it in, uh, when our state machine starts, uh, we immediately go to idle, and so the toaster's not doing nothing. Um, if we put bread into our toaster, we could be in a state that says, hey, we now have bread in there. Uh, if the user, uh, the person, actually pulls down the lever to start the toaster, then we would start toasting the bread. And then finally, this is going to be updated consistently until we've reached the timer that was defined. And then once we do, we would pop out the bread. And so now we'd be in the bread ejected state, um, and then eventually the person would want to go ahead and remove their bread. And then at this point, we're right back at the beginning, where now we're idle. And so that's that's basically all a state machine is, is you just have your defined states, and then you have your ways to go ahead and define how you want to transition to your next state. And then you uh, just set all that up in your code. 
And so one thing to know about state machines, there are a variety of types, um, and some of them can be very simple and some of them can be very, very complicated. Uh, so for our battle scene, we're going to focus on a finite state machine. And basically, all a finite state machine is, is just a state machine that has a limited number of states um, that are already defined. And so there wouldn't be an infinite number of states. We'd have it very clearly defined. And so like the example of the toaster here, uh, this would be a finite state machine because there's we have a defined number of states and transitions defined, and then that's all that is possible. There's no way to transition out of this cycle. Um, it's, it's really locked down. And so for our game logic, the finite state machine is really good for our battle sequence because we have a clear defined uh, sequence that we want to follow uh, for our battle scene. And so now that we've discussed uh, what a finite state machine is, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the state machine we want to implement in our game. And so uh, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And so for our state machine that we'll be making in our battle scene is we're going to go ahead and start in an intro state. And for our intro state, basically this is going to be uh, where we set up our phaser scene and we wait for any scene uh, transitions or set it to be fully completed uh, before we transition to our next one. Uh, so a really good example of this is in the game, uh, we can have a scene transition uh, where we have this fade in effect for our phaser scene. And until that is completed, we don't wanna do anything with our battle. So we're gonna wait for that to finish and once that's done, we would transition into our pre-battle info state. And so for our pre-battle info state, this is basically where we would uh, go ahead and show our enemy monsters or our enemy trainers. Uh, basically anything we're going to let the player know what is happening for this current battle. Uh, so in the screenshots here, we have a wild uh, monster up here. And so basically this is where we'd show the monster. We'd have our health bar come in. And now we're waiting for player input. And so we have the, the information displayed to the player. And now we're going to pause and wait until they do something. And so once they interact with our game, we would go ahead and use that as our trigger to transition to our next state, which is we're going to bring out now our monster, so our player's monster. And so for our game, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and choose our first monster. We go ahead and have it come out in the battle, and we're going to go ahead and display some text and bring out the health bar with the metadata tied to our active monster. And in this example here, uh, we are not waiting for player input. Instead, we're doing an update. And so after so many seconds of the text being on the screen, we would now finish and we would transition automatically to our next state, which would be our player input. And so our basically our player input state, this is a kind of like an idle state uh, where we don't do anything until we receive player input uh, from our game. And so here we'd have our menu with our fight item flee and switch, and we're going to wait in the state until we receive input in one of these items. And so once we do, uh, for this first one, what we'll do is we'll assume that they chose fight. And so if they do, we would use that input to transition to our enemy input. And so there's not really anything visual uh, that we show to the player. Uh, this is something that's going to happen in the background. And so this is where we would have our AI implementation of our enemy uh, or just a random choose attack. It could be simple as that. And this is how the enemy will choose their attack. And once we finish that logic, we would automatically go ahead and transition to our battle, uh, battle state. And so inside our battle state, this is where we'll have some of the logic that we've already built out, where we'll have our monster attack the enemy monster. We would have animations for when they take damage. Uh, we'd have the health bar animate. Uh, and then we'd have our foe do the same thing. And so they would go ahead and attack. They would play their animations. And once all of that is done, or we reach one of the criteria where one of the monsters is knocked out, then we would use that as our trigger to go ahead and automatically transition to our post attack check. And so this is where we'll have that logic that we already have for checking if a monster's fainted. And if so, we would animate them off the screen and we would inform the player and wait for input. And once we get that input from the player, we would finally transition to our finish state. And uh, this would basically be where we now 
end our phaser scene. Uh, so we'd have a nice fade out effect and we do a transition uh, to uh, another uh, scene. And if we come back up here, so one of the really cool things about your state machines is they can be as simple as you want, where it's a simple flow, or they could transition to multiple states. And player input is a really good example uh, because uh, what we can also do from player input is we have options for selecting an item, switching or fleeing. So instead of just going to enemy input, we could also go to... Um, this flee attempt state. And so if we chose flee, we would now go and have logic to go ahead and try to run away from the battle. So we could check if they're eligible to run away from battle. Um, we could make it a random chance where they have a you know 50% chance of running away. Uh, any type of logic could live in this state. And likewise from our flee attempt, um, if it was successful, and we're going to assume it was for our flow, we would go ahead and come up to our finish state again. And so this is an example where we have multiple states that can transition to a single state. And likewise from our post attack check state, um, if it's the beginning of our battle and you know both monsters are still alive and healthy, what we'd want to do is not go to the finish state. We need to transition back to our player input state, and that way we can repeat this cycle. All right, and so now that we discussed our finite state machine uh, that we want to implement in our battle scene, that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and start coding out our logic for our state machine class, and then we'll go ahead and transition to creating our battle states and connecting all of our logic together so we have our full battle sequence. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in this series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.